Hello, my name is Nicola Pless. I'm Shared Professor of Management, pioneer in the study of responsible leadership and guardian of the Globally Responsible Leadership Initiative. In today's Responsible Leadership Dialogue, I talk with Dr. Joe Madiat about his life and work as a responsible leader and founder of one of the leading social enterprises in the world, Grambikas, which is ranked number 21 among the top 100 NGOs in the prestigious NGO Advisor Ranking. Joe Madiat started his career as a student leader, then founded Grambikas in Odisha in India in 1969 and since then has dedicated his life to improving the lives of the most marginalized people through social innovation and sustainable technology that brings socioeconomic development and dignity to their lives. He is part of the group of outstanding social entrepreneurs selected by the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship and the Skoll Foundation and recipient of various awards, among them two Lifetime Achievement Awards. Let me provide you with some information about Gramvikas. Gramvikas is a social enterprise, more precisely, a village development organization that partners with rural communities to enable people to lead a dignified life. They achieve that by building capabilities in the communities, strengthening community institutions and mobilizing resources to respond to the needs of community members. Their approach is to promote a socially inclusive, gender equitable, self-managed and financially viable model of sustainable and holistic development where everybody benefits. Now, what is Gramvika's impact? Well, the organization has impacted over 600,000 individuals in 1,700 villages through its various programs and interventions. Let me share three examples. First, they equipped 54,000 families with renewable sources for cooking. Second, they pioneered the use of renewable energy technologies and constructed more than 54,000 biogas plants. And third, they developed an award-winning water and sanitation program that equipped 100,000 households with three taps of running water and achieved an 85% reduction in waterborne diseases. Also, they have trained other like-minded organizations across India to replicate the Gramvikas model of development and recently started their international expansion to Africa, working in Gambia and Tanzania. So, let's start the conversation. Welcome, Joe, to this interview. Thank you for making yourself available. What do you see as the main purpose of your organization? The main purpose of Grand Vikas is to be relevant to the context of today. To see that Grand Vikas as an organization is playing a role in alleviating their sufferings, in improving the quality of life, in improving their livelihoods, and in every way playing a role that nobody else would be playing. What inspired you to create Gramvikas in the first place? I always used to get my kicks out of doing something which was relevant to the people living in very remote areas, people living in abject poverty, people li living on the margins, especially people who were the scheduled caste, that means erstwhile untouchables, and the indigenous people. So I found that these are the most uncared for, marginalized people and I thought I would gain something. I, I would gain a lot of self-satisfaction in working with these people. Now, 37 years ago, has there been a shift in priorities that you have been sitting setting from the start or 
Is that something where you had the big idea in the beginning and then implemented it, or was the vision that you had for the organization emerging throughout time? Things have evolved. We, I or anyone else had not seen, okay, this is what is important, say, when we started in 71 as an organization which was the precursor to Gram Vikas, which is Young Students Movement for Development. Or in 79 when we started Gram Vikas, we had not seen that we would be working in this way, but we had said we would be relevant to the area we work, relevant to the, relevant to the people. And so when we felt that working in the area of rescuing the people, the tribal people or the indigenous people from money lenders, liquor merchants, that was something we did very effectively. Then when we were in the area of renewable energy, mostly building biogas, I think we were the best agency in the world building that. <clears throat> And now building or working with people in the area of water and sanitation also is something which we saw after biogas that really a, a, an inclusive program where all people benefited. And as working with people, we realized that how much water and sanitation was important to the Indian context, and we began working in that. Mm -hmm. So things have always evolved, and we allowed that evolution to take place mm -hmm. and then address that evolution. So you're a social entrepreneur, a thought leader, and a leader of an organization pursuing a completely new approach to community development. The system that you have developed is unique. Vika's approach lies in this combination, I think, of technological innovation, training for people to help themselves, and to install governance and leadership structures, like the Village Executive Committee, based on the democratic principle of 100% inclusion. And this ensures sustainability of facilities, of resources, as well as equality. Now, you have developed an approach called mantra, which underlies all of that, which is a very big innovation. Could you explain that? Mantra stands for Movement and Action Network for Transformation of Rural Areas. And so we are looking at transformation. So, and Mantra is essentially a water and sanitation program for dignified living. Other ways of increasing their dignity and livelihood. So <clears throat> in Mantra, any village which buys in or signs up for mantra, 100% of the families of that village will have to agree that they will participate in the whole program. Once they agree to that, as a sign that they have agreed, they will collect a thousand rupees on an average to make a corpus fund and this thousand rupees is only on an average. The poorer family is giving less and the better of family is giving more but ultimately it is a thousand rupees per family. This is deposited in a bank and the principle of this amount cannot be touched but the interest can be used for newer houses that come into the village to meet their social cost. But toilets are built by the villagers themselves. So the, in this village, people who are daily wage earned, unskilled labor, 
we give them an opportunity to become to learn masonry and plumbing in the village itself so while some portion of the village is collecting making the bricks and collecting all of the local materials the people who are unskilled labor they are taught masonry and plumbing and then these two come together and they build a, a toilet for each family and a bathing room also is for each family and from a safe water is brought to an elevated water reservoir from where from which it is sent by gravity to three taps to each of the houses one in the toilet one in the bathing room and one in the kitchen or just outside the kitchen as the family wants there is also a meter fitted onto the supply line of each family so that people will pay for water as per the amount of water they use so an important aspect here that i see is that the people themselves the villagers themselves are educated they are trained in building their own facilities so they are part of that they do it it's their work that they put into that they finance it themselves and Gram Vikas provides the consulting, the training, yeah. the oversight for them to be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, they build it themselves and they Absolutely. build skills that enable them also to take on other positions, other jobs later on while going through this common joint experience absolutely, absolutely. that is created by Gram Vickers. Yeah. And in addition, there seems to be a village spirit emerging by people working together. Yeah. <clears throat> and with regard, we touched on that a little bit earlier, to, with regard to the governance and leadership structures. So you talked a little bit about it in terms of the structure that they have funds that are set aside. Now, you also help them to build specific community structures, like executive, you also try to encourage them to promote women to take on uh, leadership functions. What is the specific approach? First of all, in any village, every adult man and woman in that village is a member of the general body of the village. Then a society is legally formed and 50% women and 50% men form the governing board of that society. Mm -hmm. This is the body which as well as which oversees the whole program. Till now, even when we go to implement this program, the men have managed our life so far. Mm -hmm. They will manage. It's a very uphill task to convince the women. Ah, so you empower them, you yeah, motivate them yeah, to do that. To see that mm -hmm. they don't need the men to control their lives, mm -hmm. that at least on issues of water and sanitation, mm -hmm. it is they who need to take their lives into their hands. Now, this unique approach um, of providing innovation, but at the same time also democratic guidance in terms of setting up um, governance structures, is that something that was invented at the very beginning? Was it something that was created at a whiteboard or is it also something that emerged over time as um, an integrated approach? We believed always in participation. So when we began to speak about water and sanitation, we saw it mainly as a program which would benefit women. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to bring the participation of women central to the whole program. So we began to speak to them. 
Initially, men resisted. But then, as they began to see the sen a sense in that, they also supported in most villages. In other villages, we had to whittle down their resistance and say this was the norm for us to work under. So these were all battles, very small battles won to win the war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. It is obviously um, quite an advancement for women in this context to basically be empowered to take up leadership positions. Yes. And it is a big advantage for them to be relieved to be the water holders of the village and to spend six to seven hours per day to carry and bring the water. In summer time, yes. Yeah. And also for the girls yes. who now have the possibility to go to school. Absolutely. And the women to take on other tasks, perhaps also being entrepreneurial. Yeah. Have you seen something like that happening, that women start now to work, to set up their own businesses? Yeah, small little businesses, yes. Mm -hmm. Some start a small shop in the front of their house. Some start uh, buying paddy means before it is made into rice, then make into rice and sell. And different things, some raise uh, country chicken and they sell it, some raise bullocks and then sell that. So what? little micro entrepreneurial yes, absolutely. businesses. Micro yeah. Wonderful. Now you are not only setting up an entirely new organization in a way that have never existed before, you also did that in a truly challenging context in remote villages. Now what were the challenges that you faced as a social innovator, as a leader, and as a human being in setting up Graham Vickers and your project? First was to challenge myself and to say this can be done. Then to challenge my colleagues who were not believing that the 100% coverage is possible. So get them on board and then demonstrate to the public, which means the government, the media, to the administration, that this could be done. And this perhaps is the only way to go to, to undertake water and sanitation in a truly inclusive way. And that was the only way to be successful in water and sanitation. We believe these numbers, 1,200, it's a small number. But that stands out in the, whole la in the whole landscape as something exceptional. I don't think this sort of a water and sanitation is taken up anywhere else in the world in this fashion, mm -hmm. truly inclusive. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. All the best of luck for the future of Gram Vickers and for our hopefully continued collaboration. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much, Joe. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>